I heard there were lots of issues yesterday when it came to creating your graphs and I completely understand and anticipated that. So I wanted to show you and help um, with things that may or may not help you create successful graphs now. Um, and I'm going to do that by creating some problems and using what was already created. First of all, many, many of you um, forgot to include a very important column called results. If you do not have a results column telling how many kilograms of tomatoes were yielded, then you don't really have any important data to graph. Um, so I need to make sure that all of you have a results column with the number of kilograms yielded so that you have important data to graph. Numerical data is necessary for graphing. Secondly, if I were to try and graph all of this information, my computer would not be able to figure out what in the world I'm looking for here. Um, and so this is too much information for my computer. What's really important to know is that I need trial one and how many, trial one, two, and three, and how many kilograms each trial yielded. In order to just graph those things, what I can do is come and highlight those columns, press Command C to copy, and then come down and highlight four columns and press Command V to paste. Then I'll come do the same thing over here. Command C, copy. Command V, paste. Okay? If you're on a PC, it's Control C and Control V. All right, now I have what I need. Don't worry. Many of you are going to say, oh, I tried that and it came up with a problem. I get it, and we're going to talk about that right now. So if I press graph right now, I might look at it and be like, Okay, it looks like a graph. Miss Miss, go accept it. But it doesn't mean anything. It says 17 kilograms was 16.7%. 14 kilograms was 33.3%. And 18 kilograms was 50%. They're just taking the number for my trial and putting it in a percentage. That is not what I want. Um, and I have trial versus results. Trial 1, 17 kilograms. Trial 2, 14 kilograms. Trial 3, 18 kilograms. This is accurate. However, when I look at it, it's misleading because... Um, 17 kilograms looks like less than 14 kilograms just because it's trial 1, trial 2, and trial 3. What I really need is that this side should be counting from 0 to 20, and this side down here should say trial 1, trial 2, and trial 3. And our computer, some programs know that and they do it well, um, and others do not. So when I come to chart types, I, I could do something called switch rows to columns, and I can try that, but look, it's still not accurate. I have my trials here and trials there. So now it didn't really help me. So I want to talk to you about what it is that you can do um, to fix up when you run into a problem such as this. So what you can then do is say, okay, it doesn't like the way that it's set up um, in this manner. So I am going to try and think about it in another way. Well, there are a couple things that I see here as potential problems. One is our data is not recorded properly. Our headings are where we're supposed to put our units in parentheses. And then our data itself should just be numbers because that is more legible and more readable to computer coding. And so that is one of the main reasons you put your units within your heading and then you just have numbers within your data. Many, many, many of you made this mistake as well when creating your table. So if that's a problem you ran into, that might be where your problem is lying. Okay, so remember, units go within parentheses in your heading and then your data should be numerical. Now if I come and try and graph this, let's see what happens. Again, I might look at it and go, oh, that's not what I want. I don't want trial number in blue and results in kilograms. Well, let's go manipulate our data a little bit. Use row 7 as headers. Yeah, I want that. Use column A as labels. Okay, this is looking better. 1, 2, and 3, 17, 14, 18. It's accurate, but still it doesn't show different colors for 1, 2, and 3, which I want. Switch rows and columns. Okay, much better. My key says 1, 2, 3. I have my data there. I can read what's going on. My axes are not labeled properly, and neither is my heading, but I can change that later. So that is good. Um, I can ch then choose which kind of graph I want. Personally, this column graph is exactly what I want, so I'm going to leave that alone. Now I'm going to come to customization because it's really important that um, I know how what in the world's going on with this graph. So then I'm going to title it um, Tomato Yield because that's how much was yielded of my tomatoes in kilograms, okay? On the 
the right is where my legend is. I like that. That's good. I like that my font is in black. That's easy to read. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. Um, my horizontal axis title, that's this one. I um, want to go ahead and change that because it should have something else there. Instead of saying results in kilograms, it should say trials one, two, and three. Okay, now that I've done that, um, we can see what is there. And then we can change our uh, axis to left vertical, and that's where I want my results in kilograms. Okay. Um, you can change your minimum and your maximum grid lines. I'm not worried about about that. That's fine. It's still easy to read. That makes me happy. So I'm okay with what is there. Um, whenever you're happy with the way it looks and you know you have both axes labeled and a title, then you are you are good if you want your title to um, be in a different location, you can mess with that as well. But when you're happy with the way it looks, or at least you think you're happy, you can go ahead and say insert. What's great from this is you can go then into, I don't know if you noticed, but there's this here. You can go into quick editing mode. And what that does is it allows you to then click on any of this stuff. Like I don't want results kilograms there. So I can just um, press delete, which deletes my whole graph. See, look at those mistakes, but don't worry. Command Z, undo that, and not a problem. Another trick is if you really don't like what is there, um, and if it won't let you delete it, like we just saw, make the font white, and ta-da, it's disappeared. And now it says trials one, trial two, and trial three. Also, I was playing with it, and I set up another table. So I had so my column D, I knew wanted I wanted that to be all my labels um, or my headings. So I just wrote trial number, and then I had trial one, trial two, trial three over here, and then my results in kilograms 17, 14, 18. And when I did that with my graph, I still run into some of the same types of issues where I want it like this, but I can see right away trial one, trial two, and trial three are there trial number and results and it's very easy to read. The only thing I don't like about it is my key is not accurate so when I do that if I press switch rows and columns I get the red, blue, and yellow trial one, trial two, trial three. It still has the results in kilograms there and I still want to customize my chart by changing my um, title um, but mostly at this point it's good and so I could then insert this chart. I could get rid of results in kilograms if I feel like it's not the best um, but it's all it's all in there, and so this table setup would be the one that I would recommend most, um, as it is, uh, it was the easiest to do with the least amount of manipulation. So again, these are your headings, and then your data would go in here. Um, so obviously your data table would be necessary to correlate then with your graph because otherwise nobody knows what you did in trial one. I can look up here now and see trial one was sand, no change, yes for peat moss, normal fertilizer, and water. Um, so you have to have your data table near your graph in order for it to mean anything. I hope today's video lesson helped you to troubleshoot some of the problems that you may or may not have been having yesterday. Um, and if you have any more questions, let me know.